Hi guys, Darth Deuce here, back with another video. Today, something a little different. We're gonna be taking a collection tour, taking a look at my uh, Hot Toys slash uh, six scale collection. Um, I've been collecting uh, Hot Toys and six high and six scale uh, seriously for about two years now, basically since I've gotten out of university. Um, and actually I've had an actual job um, that allows me to at least somewhat fund for these. Um, I still argue I can't really afford them to be fair, but, uh, yeah, I've gotten right into hot toys last year, especially I was in real deep. I bought a bunch this year. I've calmed down a little bit, but I still got a handful of figures. Um, I figured now would be a good time to take a look at the whole collection. It's grown a lot since the last time you would have seen anything. I think I did a collection tour a couple of years ago and I maybe had a handful of six scale figures. Uh, there's a lot more now. I've bought a lot more. Um, and yeah, I absolutely love these things. Um, it might be weird to say I've had like collecting goals, but like definitely a goal of mine was to eventually be able to collect hot toys, uh, collect high end six scale. It's something I've always wanted to have. Uh, I've always wanted to have these figures when I was younger, seeing videos and reviews of them on uh, YouTube and now finally be able to actually be able to buy them and enjoy them. I think I'm very happy. I've been able to, uh, achieve that with my collection, but, uh, yeah, let's uh, just get right on in it. I'll apologize in advance if the lighting's kind of bad and this room's lighting's not the greatest and there's just not much I can do about it, unfortunately. But up here, some non uh, hot toy stuff. I do have this little Boba Fett shelf. I've got the Black Series Boba Fett helmet, which is still a really good helmet, especially for the price back when it first came out. And just like a couple Boba Fett things. There's the original Funko Pop. There's the Galaxy of Adventures figure. A couple of uh, 30th anniversary collector coins for Boba Fett. I think it's the McCory and the holiday special. And on the wall there, I've got my uh, autograph from Jeremy Bullock uh, from a number of years back now. And uh, the vintage collection, uh, recent return, well, recent, it's almost two years old now, I think, Return of the Jedi Boba Fett on the card. On this little shelf here on the side, I've got all my Marvel figures um, that I still have. I have sold a handful of figures off from this collection, believe it or not. Um, but here we have Deadpool from Deadpool 2. Absolutely love this figure. Definitely my favorite Marvel figure in the collection. Um, just absolutely awesome. I love the films. I uh, love the character. And this figure is really, really good with great articulation. Looks amazing. Has tons of accessories for a lot of options. Um, all the fun different hand poses that you can have with the different hand options. Uh, yeah, just a really, really awesome figure. And then down below him, we've got the Endgame Captain America. Really nice figure. Love the uh, head sculpt there. The uh, Christopher Evans sculpt. I think it looks really, really nice. Uh, my only real qualms with this figure is that the articulation in the legs isn't very good. The pants are really restrictive around the hips, which is a little unfortunate. But still, a really nice piece to have on the shelf. Uh, really like uh, the presence he kind of has there. And below him, I've got the Endgame Thor, which is a nice figure. Um, good Chris Hemsworth likeness. He's got the cool lightning effects that you can put around his arms and you can also put them on the discs there or swap out the discs. And he's got the interchangeable arms. You can have his look at the beginning of the movie. Um, got his, uh, hammer there, Stormbreaker, um, or axe, I guess, which I guess is technically inaccurate. I never knew that was inaccurate until I watched reviews like the later releases of Thor. Um, but still, this one's really nice. And then down here, we've got uh, Star Lord from Infinity War, which I don't know how long this figure will stay in the collection. Uh, he was kind of an impulse buy. There's a few impulse buys on, around in this collection. I won't lie. Um, it's still really nice. Uh, I like displaying him with the mask, and the mask is really cool. And I like these effect parts where he's uh, running on the Doctor Strange the magic. So that's really nice. A uh, really nice figure. And then moving alongside, I guess, um, to not hot toys. This is actually. My uh, 3 0 DLX Transformers figures. Absolutely incredible figures, man. Uh, for the price point, uh, I think some of the absolute best value for money when it comes to high end figures uh, on the market right now. 3 0 kills it with these DLX releases. Um, we've got the Bumblebee Optimus Prime, which is really nice. They're all really nice. Um, I've got them, um, all the posability, the seamlessness of the joints, uh, the accessories, they all have light up eyes. Uh, oh, it's just these. I just can't gush about these figures enough. They're all absolutely incredible. Um, but you got him. I don't know if you'll be able to tell really. I can turn his lights on in his eyes. Oh, they actually uh, light up pretty well on the camera. Um, but yeah, you got the eyes there. They just make the light up eyes. They're nothing too crazy, but they just add so much more uh, 
realism, I guess, to it. I absolutely love that. The 3-0 Revenge of the Fallen Optimus Prime. It's been almost a year since I got this figure now, but this one might be my favorite out of the three. So good, man. So good. All the paint, the sculpted work, the articulation, the accessories. He is super, super good. I'm not going to turn his lights on because you have to take apart his head to do so. But, uh, yeah. He is absolutely incredible. And then the also equally incredible uh, sound wave. So good. Again, sculpt and paint. Awesome. He comes with Ravage. Ravage does actually transform. It can go into his chest. He's got his rifle, his shoulder cannon. He can turn on his lights. His just a button as well. His lights up turn lights up really nicely as well. Yeah, these things are awesome. I know some people kind of dunk on these for not being transforming figures. Um, and I get not liking non-transforming figures. Trust me, most of the transformers I have in my collection don't or do transform. And I usually prefer it that way. But these things are like works of art. Even if you're not, this isn't your thing. You've got to admit, these things look absolutely incredible. Um, yeah, it's crazy to me that some people will say these are bad just because they don't transform. Like, you got to be getting the grip if you're saying that. I'm going to be honest. Uh, <laughs> I guess moving on. Over here, we've now got some uh, Star Wars Hot Toys, which is the, what you'll be seeing the most of. You've got Crate Luke back there. It's probably my second favorite look for Luke, I'll be honest. I really do like that figure a lot. It's one of the first ones I got. Um, I definitely would like to get a Luke that is more based on the Return of the Jedi look at some point. I might get that uh, Mando uh, Luke Skywalker. We'll see. But I do really like the uh, Last Jedi one. And we've got Qui-Gon. He was kind of an impulse to buy last year, but I honestly don't regret it one bit. Uh, Qui-Gon's one of my favorite prequel Jedi uh, I just really like Liam Neeson as an actor as well, and this figure is so good. Uh, some nice accessories, great uh, sock robes and tunic and clothing and whatnot, and then the Liam Neeson uh, sculpt and likeness I think is absolutely incredible. Really, really nice. Really like this figure a lot. And then over there, we've just got uh, Han Solo from the uh, Solo Star Story. A simple figure, probably one of the more basic figures out of all the... Uh, Six scale I have, but still really nice. You get a lot of nice poses because his clothing's not very restrictive, and you get some nice attitude out of him, which I think is really cool. And the uh, likeness to the actor. I'm not going to say his name because I don't want to butcher it, but uh, really well done as well. Then moving up, we've got what was one of my grail figures for a long time, the sideshow uh, Star Wars The Old Republic Darth Malgus. Absolutely love the character. And I think it's super cool that Sideshow made a figure uh, of this character. We don't usually get Expanded Universe characters as a high-end six scale figures. And it is a Sideshow figure, so it does have issues. His articulation is not too great. The body's kind of meh underneath uh, what's going on there. Um, the pleather suit isn't the best quality. Uh, to be fair, it is like 10 years old and I got it used. But uh, around like the bends and the joints where the elbows are and the knees are and around the crotch area the pleather starting to crack and uh, flake off which is a bit unfortunate so i kind of avoid trying to mess with it now but uh absolutely love that this guy got a, the six scale treatment the head sculpt and face paint for a sideshow figure is really good um i like they can remove the mask and display them like that uh this cape he has is really nice he's got the wired hoods so you can actually make the hood sit on his uh, head pretty well which i really like as well uh yeah just yeah absolutely love this one and we have the Rise of Skywalker Kylo Ren. I used to have the Force Awakens one. I ended up selling that one, getting this one. Uh, biggest reason is because this one had a uh, head sculpt, and the Force Awakens one doesn't, and the Last Jedi figure is really, really expensive and didn't want to pay for it. So this one's really nice. You know, he's my favorite character from the sequel trilogy. Uh, and I think if you are a fan of the character, definitely one to consider picking up if you don't have it already and consider getting hot toys of him. Good accessories. I really like the helmet there. Can uh, light up. That's a really nice feature. The Adam Driver sculpt's great. The articulation for the most part's really good. Uh, really nice figure. Very happy to have that one. And then moving on over here, we've got my Clone Wars shelf. Clone Trooper, basically Clone Trooper shelf. I'm not going all in Clone Wars. Like I'm not going to get the Clone Wars Darth Maul. I'm probably not going to get Ahsoka. Um, I'd get a Clone Wars Obi-Wan if that ever ends up going up for pre-order, but they showed that off years ago now, so I'm kind of losing hope on that. But over here, we've got the 501st. In the uh, right corner there is the very first high-end 6 scale figure I ever got. It's the old Sideshow 501st Deluxe, which I think still, aside from the body kind of being crap, holds up pretty well. It still looks really good. 
comes with a ton of accessories and uh, different options for hands and feet even and whatnot. Things that the Hot Toys one even didn't even come with. So that's really cool. I still really like it, which is why I didn't get rid of it. And then on the other side, we've got the Hot Toys uh, Deluxe 501st, which is a better figure. The body's way better. I think it looks a bit more accurate, a bit better. Um, it's got its own cool accessory. I like that it comes with the bazooka. That's really cool. Jetpack and stuff going on. Uh, very nice. Comes with the uh, 330 second helmet, which is very cool. And then we've got Captain Rex, definitely one of my favorites in the collection. Super nice, super nice, beautifully detailed. Pose is great. Definitely one of my favorite clone characters. Had to get this when he was announced to be coming for Hot Toys. And I love having him with a couple clones flanking him. That's super cool. And he has a really good head sculpt, which I don't have on him, but it's over there in the corner. Then Clone Wars Anakin, another release. This is one from this year. Really nice. I'm glad they did this. I started collecting after... The uh, Revenge of the Sith Anakin had already come and gone and had gotten pretty expensive. So I'm glad I got an opportunity to get some sort of Anakin. Because definitely one of my favorite Jedi. And I really like the Clone Wars look. I think it looked really good. I think they translated it pretty well. I really like that they included the interchangeable uh, Tartakovsky style inspired uh, armor. Which is what I have on the larger chest plate with the cape. I think that looks super, super cool. And he has like the droid popper or the grenade or whatever. Um, and whatnot. The Hayden Christian likeness is pretty good. I don't think it's 100%, but it's pretty good. Really like this one. And Commander Cody, a figure I actually almost skipped on, but I'm glad I didn't. Beautiful, beautiful figure. Um, absolutely love the head sculpt, which is why I have a, on him tons of accessories. The helmet looks really good as well. You can't go wrong displaying him either way. Articulation's great. All the clones are really good, um, and Cody is no exception uh, to that rule. Uh, would definitely like to get an Obi-Wan at some point to go with Cody. I don't know. Like I said, I'd really like him to do that Clone Wars Obi-Wan, but uh, we'll see if that happens. Moving up, we've got my Boba Fett shelf. I used to have the Sideshow Mythos Boba Fett. ended up getting rid of it, so I get the Mando 2 back. I didn't see any reason to have four Boba Fett figures, but I did go three. I think Boba Fett is the character I have the most figures of when it comes to 6CL. When I was originally starting to collect, I said to myself I wasn't going to get... Multiple versions of the same character, but I've broken that very much, um, which you'll see. <laughs> we got the Tython Boba Fett. Absolutely love the head sculpt on that. And the figure in general is really good. I apologize for the quality. It's really not that great, unfortunately, but I can't do much about the lighting here. The Empire Strikes Back Boba Fett, another really nice figure. This is technically the uh, 40th anniversary reissue, but the only difference is the box. And then we've got the armored reclaimed his armor boba fett from mando again love this figure details great i love that he comes with the rocket dart effects those look so cool i like that i can get this pose it looks so awesome he comes with a bunch of other effect parts which is great um, very fun figure um if i could only keep one i'd probably keep empire strikes back it's the most iconic look but uh i don't know i hope i don't have to choose ever because uh i will say that the mando set is definitely a lot more fun with its options I got a couple other little bits and bobs. I've got the Django Fett Slave One, old Black Series Titanium chip. Got the retro uh, Mando Boba Fett, which is from this year, I think. An old Clone Wars Boba Fett figure. Then on this side, we've got my Darth Mauls. We've got the Phantom Menace DX16, and we've got the DX18, maybe? Uh, solo Star Wars Story Darth Maul. I think this is the only figure of this look for Darth Maul. I don't think any other company made a figure of this Darth Maul, but I could be wrong. Oh uh, yeah, I love these both. Um, the Phantom Mazel is definitely my favorite. It's got more cooler accessories, poses a bit better, and obviously it's a more iconic look. I absolutely love this figure. One of my absolute favorites in the collection. I love that screaming head sculpt. He comes with normal head sculpt as well, which is also really good. The posability is great. It's like the only figure I display with the swooshing slicer blades. I feel like it's easier to get the poses with him with those. Um, he's got the probe droid. He's got a bunch of other accessories. Yeah, absolutely love that one. This one's also no slouch. Really good. That head sculpt is really killer. Posability is great. Again, I love that he comes with the chair. You can get him sitting on the chair. I'm actually probably going to repose him soon and put him on the chair. Again, I usually swap up the pose every once in a while with him. And uh, the lights here is awesome. The holograms felt kind of pointless, but yeah, still really cool. The uh, Robotic uh, legs there on this one is definitely the uh, show sealer with him. They're really, really cool. Moving up, 
We've got, I guess, assorted villains shelf. My absolute favorite uh, Hot Toys and Six Seal figure I have. If I can only keep one, it would definitely be the Empire Strikes Back Darth Vader, which is an absolute beautiful figure. He's got all light-up features, which I'm not going to turn on because it's kind of a pain, um, even though I kind of want to. Because I haven't done it in a while. Let's see if I can do it easily without... Okay, I'm not going to fool around with it right now, but uh, the light-up features on it is super awesome. Poses pretty well, considering it's a Darth Vader, and he's pretty bulky. Uh, accessories are decent. I like that you can remove the helmet see the back of his head. Yeah, very cool. I am strongly considering getting the Obi-Wan Darth Vader because that uh, helmet sculpt with the slice in it, you can see his face underneath, is very, very cool. And it might sound kind of bad that I'm considering getting a figure just for a head sculpt, really, but, uh, man, it looks so cool. And he also comes with a LED light-up lightsaber that has, like, an actual, like, wire and stuff. Eh, we'll see. I haven't committed onto that yet, but, yeah, the Empire Strikes Back one, still very, very cool. I love the display base as well. Sideshow General Grievous, this is the more recent reissue. It is definitely by far the worst 6 scale figure I've ever bought. Um, it's one of the only 6 scale figures where I might reg regret I hate saying I regret purchasing something, but I might regret purchasing this as thing. Purchasing this, I don't know. Um, it is kind of cool. Like he's big. He has a nice shelf presence. He looks pretty cool, um, but he was pretty expensive. He has a bunch of loose joints. His fingers pop off all the time. He has a shoulder joint that straight up keeps coming apart on me. Can't hold poses. The stand sucks. The lightsabers look kind of cheap. There's sculpt choices that don't look right. Um, and the list goes on of issues. Uh, if I didn't have Count Dooku, I would probably have returned to this figure or not have bothered purchasing it or would have sold it by now. Um, but I think he looks good with the other uh, kind of separatist guys, so I keep him around for now. Um, once you have him in pose, he does look cool, but uh, it's just he is absolutely no fun to handle at all. And we have Count Dooku, another one of the first ones I bought, and I absolutely love this one as well. Another favorite of mine in the collection. You know, Darth Tyrannus himself, the Christopher Lee likeness is really, really good because he wears pretty simple clothing. Posability is easy and fun with this guy. Get some really nice kind of elegant dueling poses with him with his lightsaber. He's got a little hologram projector. He has a few different holograms that includes the Death Star plans, which is super cool. Um, he has lightning effects for his hands as well, which I wish I could display him with, but they're so large that uh, if you just have them have them shooting the lightning out and the lightning isn't kind of resting on something. They just droop from their own weight, which kind of sucks. And they're kind of really massive, but uh, still very awesome. Absolutely love that one. And another one I absolutely love, which I got this year, released this year, is the Django Fett. Super, super good. The uh, Tamira sculpt there of a young Tamira is really great. Tons of accessories. Posability is really good. Uh, looks incredible. Love the sheen on the armor. You know, you can move the range finder. I have him. He has both versions of the jetpack. He's got his poncho. He's got a interchangeable gauntlet piece that has the blades and a bunch of other random little accessories. The list goes on. He's, yeah, so good. So good. If you're a fan of the character and you can afford these figures, 100% should be getting it. Very good. And then lastly, for Star Wars, we have the Mando shelf. Um,. Which I don't have any immediate plans to grow. Um, I do have a slot for another figure. It, at some point, I might get Bo Katan. I haven't decided on that though. With Christmas coming up and all that, money's kind of tighter because I gotta buy presents for people and stuff. So I'm not too gung ho on getting another one figure right now. But we do have the heavy infantry Mandalorian Paz Vizsla, which is probably the most expensive figure I bought. I did not get him on release. I bought him on the aftermarket and I paid the price that he pretty much went for at the time. I don't know if that price has changed or not. Um, I don't regret the purchase, uh, but yeah, it was expensive. <laughs> but he's really awesome. The shelf presence here, he's big, bulky. The paint and sculpt is incredible. He's got that big gun, which is super cool. He's got his knife, I think, kind of stored in his boot. A jetpack and all that. Posability is pretty good for how bulky he is as well. You can get most poses you want to get. Uh, yeah, so he's really awesome. Death Watch Mando, a figure I almost didn't bother buying because I try to avoid army builders for the most part, but 
I don't know what it is about the Death Watch Mando, but I just really like that design. I have the vintage collection figure, I have the Black Series figure, and I have the six scale figure. And each and every one of them is really good, but of course the Hot Toys one is my favorite. It has great paint apps, great sculpt, good articulation, good accessories. Even though he has a lot of reuse of parts from this Mando and Boba Fett, I assume. Um, still, it comes together to make a really cool looking Mando uh, character, so I really like him. And then my Mandalorians, uh, Durasteel Mando here being one of the first, another one of the first uh, Hot Toys figures I bought. I think it was the first one I pre-ordered and absolutely love this one. This is my favorite look for Mando, having the different color, rough, rugged armor will always be my favorite. It just has more of that gunslinger, western kind of feel to him than the Beskar. I'm as cool as the Beskar is. I just like this more grungier, grittier kind of look for him. Love the Stormtrooper helmet on the pikes for the stand. I do have some of the deluxe accessory with them, like he didn't come with the flame effect, but I gave it to this Mando. And also this uh, pram fits more with this figure than it does with Beskar, so I gave it to him. But yeah, we got the little Grogu there, and then we got the Mando here looking awesome. absolutely love this one. And then followed by the Beskar, which is also really great. Um, there is a Season 2 one coming out, which comes with even more stuff, um, which I... <laughs> It's so tempting to get because it comes with the Pedro Pascal sculpt. It has the spear. It has the dark saber, but I gotta re resist. Um, the only way I would get it is if I sold this one. I'm probably not gonna do that. So yeah, he's got that whistling birds effect. I got him on the jetpack, looking super cool with his pistol out. And I got a Grogu down there. Some of the other accessories of Cam Tono. Yeah, but on all the Mando figures are super super good. If you're a fan of the show and the character, I would definitely recommend picking. Well, at least one of them up if, if you can afford it. But yeah, that's that. So the last thing to do is to go on to the shelf here, which is mainly, well, not mainly, it's a little bit of DC and a little bit of G.I. Joe. So we actually got some more 3-0 here. We got the Snake Eye, Snake Eyes. We got the Storm Shadow uh, camo figure. There was the normal Storm Shadow. And there's this one with uh, more of a camo pattern. He's got the Arasha Kage logo instead of the Cobra logo. He also has sleeves on his arm instead of just being bare. Really nice figure. Um, not as good as the figure above him, which you'll see in a second. But he's got a great array of accessories. Posability is decent. The arm articulation isn't as good as I wish it was, um, but still really nice. I'm happy to have it because he's a nice companion piece for Snake Eyes. And Snake Eyes is really good. And again, 3-0, I think killing it with these figures especially for the price point. These guys ring in a bit cheaper than Hot Toys and I think are pretty much on par in terms of quality for the most part. Uh, they don't have like unmasked head sculpts, of course, so that cheapens them a bit. But yeah, tons of great accessories, looks incredible. Nice amount of weapon storage, really good articulation. Yeah, Snake Eyes is really, really nice. I really love this figure a lot. I got a little three and three inch uh, Snake Eyes there with him as well. Then above him, we've got my only uh, third party six scale figure I've ever bought. This is, I think, Black Skull from VTS Toys, I think, um, which is uh, Black Mask from Batman Arkham Origins. Really liked the Black Mask character, and this figure wasn't too expensive. I think it's like 200 bucks or something, and I was like Canadian, so I was even less than that in USD. And yeah, it comes with a ton of accessories. You got like the assault rifle, which has like multiple moving and removable parts. You got a die cast baseball bat, a time bomb, really nice display base. Ton, a good array of hand options, different eye options. You can swap out the different eyes. You can have him kind of look into the side. You can have him not have the black around his eyes, which is super cool. The handguns, which he has little holsters underneath his coat, which you can store them in, which is super cool. You can display them without the coat if you want, which is really nice. Um, yeah, really, really cool figure. My only reservation about this guy is that uh, a little scared of the white suit uh, getting dirty or yellowing. But, uh, I don't know, it looks all right so far. Then up here, we've got the Arkham Origins Hot Toys Deathstroke. Beautiful figure. I was surprised that when I got this, I got it after it had already come out. So I got it on the secondary market. Not surprised, it was still kind of at retail price back then. I don't know what it is now. But this is an absolutely incredible figure. If you're a fan of the games and a fan of the character, yeah, you definitely owe it to yourself to get this guy if you can afford it. It's so good, man. Um, the only thing that's really missing is an unmasked Slade Wilson head sculpt, which is honestly fine with me because I just would probably display him with the mask on anyways. Beautifully detailed, great color. It has some different color 
that makes him pop more on the shelf. Great amount of accessories. You got the handgun, you got grenades, the sword, the staff, the remote claw, some hand options. Um, different chest piece so you can have more room to move the arms around, which is super cool. Uh, these little uh, uh, pieces of cloth that are from his tie, from his bandana or whatever, are actually wired so you can pose them around even though the fabric did come apart on me. I had to glue them down to the wires and I kind of sort of fixed it. But uh, yeah, absolutely awesome figure. And I've also got the DC Icons uh, Deathstroke there chilling with them. And then last but not least, we have the recent DX19 uh, Dark Knight Trilogy Batman, which I think is also my most recent uh, six scale purchase from a couple months back. This is another character I really wanted in the uh, Hot Toy six scale if I ever got the opportunity. And I'm glad they did reissue slash uh, kind of uh, improve um, with their new release of this figure. I'm super happy to have this one. I absolutely love Dark Knight Trilogy. Um, absolutely love Christian Bale's Batman and this figure is absolutely beautiful has like really great presence on the shelf love the display base the Christian Bale head sculpt without the mask on looks super good he's got the uh, head sculpt with the uh, sonar vision kind of uh, lenses on that light does light up which is cool interchangeable mouth plates so you can have different expressions batarangs I think he has the little grenades the EMP gun uh, the little sticky bomb gun and maybe some other things um, which I can't remember off the top of my head. The cape looks great. The suit itself looks great. Posability is pretty good as well. Yeah, absolutely awesome figure that I really like having on the shelf. I don't know if I'd ever get any other Dark Knight characters that they decided to re-release. I consider a Bane and Joker. I don't know if I'd actually buy them or not, but yeah. Anyways, that is pretty much it. Um, the video is running on 26 minutes now, so we're going to end her off here, but yeah, really happy with the figures I've been able to uh, accumulate over the last couple of years. I've definitely been trying to slow down a bit because this definitely is not cheap by any means. Um, but yeah, there's still some great stuff coming out in the near future. So, or not really the near future, but in the future. So we'll see what other stuff I end up picking up. But yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, let me know what you think down in the comments below. And uh, I guess I'll see you all in the next video. May the force be with you.